Hi everyone, you're very welcome to this three week webinar for Irish Tree Council Tree Week 2023. Grassroots tree planting and ecosystem restoration, empowering communities to repair broken ecosystems. I'm Conan Connolly from Shield Decree, where we're regenerating people and wider nature. And we're very happy to host Frankie van der Laan, founder and director of Mere Grown, and John D. Liu. Ecosystems Ambassador at Common Land Foundation as our guests and speakers today. Like I said, I'm Colin Connolly. I'm with Shield Decree, regenerating people and wider nature, like it says on our logo there. And our mission is to restore Ireland's ecosystem and communities. We do this through education focused on regenerative cultures, which is basically looking at ourselves and how we interact with nature and how better to support ourselves. There was a quote in the kitchen not too far from here saying you can't pour from an empty cup. This is why we're looking at humans as first pillar. So the education is focused on regenerative cultures and healing ourselves. So then we can go out then and explore the resilient and regenerative food systems and the actual wider ecosystem restoration work. This kind of speaks for itself to physical, physical work. As an organisation, we're targeting adults, young adults, who live in our rural communities around the County Monaghan. Um, we recently completed a course with a group of tw 20 farmers from the region on the topic of regenerative agriculture, ecosystem restoration. And we want to build upon our connection with this group and to further work with those people um, to expand to expand the work. And um, we've also recently completing projects with urban dwellers. In lockdown we did a course with I think 20 people in each town so 40 people 40 households where we delivered raised beds filled them with soil delivered seedlings and seeds and then delivered over video YouTube there's actually a playlist on our website of a course over the growing season and um, where people got to see how their food comes into existence by how it grows we're also developing a local online food hub. We'll link up local growers and producers with people who want to buy the produce, consumers, and who want to support healthy ecosystems and regenerative food. To this end, then, we've recently built the centre where we're in now. It's made from straw bale. We get it on a small farm here where we farm regeneratively and educate people. So it's a space dedicated to education, exploration, social justice, solidarity, healing, transformation and regeneration. These two graphics are representative of the work that we do. The ego system is that there on the left where we see humans as the top of the food chain. We're actually part of an ecosystem where humans are part of bigger whole. So we're moving people from the ego system to the ecosystem in the consciousness sense. So we've got a video here about the work that we're doing. Welcome to Shield Decree. We are Ireland's first ecosystem restoration community. Situated in the northeast of Ireland, approximately halfway between Dublin and Belfast, we have established our camp on this piece of land, which we have started to manage holistically in order to restore the ecosystem, which has been degraded by deforestation, depopulation and intensive industrial agriculture. We believe that both, both people and this land are in need of healing, restoration and ultimately regeneration. And this is our vision for what we are doing here. Creating a space for people and wider nature can come together and regenerate. Human, humans are not separate from nature and we need to learn to operate as part of the Earth's ecosystem in order for us to regenerate and thrive. So we've completely changed how the land is managed. We've brought on humans, pigs, chickens, horses, alpacas, and we plan to create a food forest by planting trees and a market garden. The area here in red is our space for vegetable production, market gardening. What we did originally was put pigs on the field. The pigs removed the grass, and after which then we outlined uh, market garden beds 
and then together we built them with straw and compost and covered them then with black plastic then to keep the weeds and stuff off. We've also planted a food forest, dug a pond, planted agroforestry and now the centre that we're in now is where we're going to do some education work. So the education work, there are, all, there are all these systemic structural inequalities, you can see the list of them there, um, that we're dealing with in this society, Western culture, global capitalism, however, whatever way you want to describe it, there are many there, but there are, they're kind of one solution, and we see that one solution as the work that we do which is creating this ecologically harmonious, efficient and productive, abundant system, in fact. Um, so we asked the question, how do we work with nature as opposed to against her or extract from her? Um, so it's about nudging the system in the right direction. And it works very well or it links up very well with the work that Frankie here and John are doing in so these last two slides are from John's movie about the Lost Plateau in China, where working in harmony with nature instead of exploiting her can result in life coming back. So it's just about nudging things in the right direction. So we're up for the same work in Ireland and our work links in well with John's work and Frankie's work, which they'll talk about now. Um, so we'll hand over now to Frankie who's going to talk about the work of Mir Groen. Uh, for everybody that doesn't, doesn't know me, I'm Franco van der Laan from Foundation Mir Groen, which stands for More Green in Dutch. And that has expanded into a tree project called More Trees Now. Uh, we're here in the Irish uh, Tree Week, and I'm... We, we had a wonderful reception everywhere. We were also to the UK. And I'd like to show you what Meerdrun is about, what More Treat is about, what we're trying to do here in Ireland and get some results and specifically get a discussion on where we want to get in the next summer and then in the next season. So Meerdrun started with me, I'm an ecologist. And my concern is how to get a balance between human society and its ecosystem. So that didn't really work in the United Nations, it didn't work in all kinds of companies, it didn't work anywhere. So after 25 years trying to get some hookups, uh, but with a lot of net marketing management and ecological experience, I stepped out of the system to do things that, that made me happy and that makes many people happy. So I started bottom up in 2006. That led within five years to the founding of Foundation More Green. And we have a quite different approach than most nature organizations. We don't withdraw from society to be mourning about what's going wrong elsewhere. We want to challenge society and get everybody in. So that's why our slogan is eight days a week, you can do 25 kinds of ecological management, something which suits everybody. That has led in 2011 in that we run about 2,000 volunteers, 150 of which are the, the, the backbone. They work every week or every month. But we do a lot of work with apprentices and main, mainly team building. That ma for that reason, we managed to run about 1,100 hectares, which is about 2,000 or 2,500 acres and land. And the next challenge of the next big step was that we were trying to involve local, provincial, national organizations to get up. Because, of course, but you understand, I started bottom up, but my challenge is, or our challenge is, how to get slow. And in 2020, we were discovered by a national organization, Urgenda, that's the one that challenged the Dutch government to keep their promises on climate change. And they had another partner, the Caring Farmer. Caring Farmer had land, and Urgenda had the organizational capacity, and they helped us going from regional to national. So, this gives you a feeling for what we do. We don't only do trees, we do vegetable gardens, we do flower meadows. And here you see 
an example of one of our 10 or 20 flower meadows. Does that make you happy? I think everybody gets happy. And we do our own seed production, and every year we add five or six or 10 more hectares. We also love prices. We love the climate crisis as a challenge to get people involved. But the next door you see a crisis, which was the, the oak procession caterpillar that was even killing the, 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 the French cycle, how to call it, the Tour de France. And we had that problem in Holland coming up with the climate crisis, and we, we designed an ecological solution by building hundreds of bird cages and hundreds of bat cages that ate the moths and ate the caterpillar. Also, what makes people very happy is to eat trustworthy food. You see here our shop. There's no wall. There's no cage. There's no price list. Everybody can pick and choose what they want, and they can take what they want. And we have from May until October, we, we supply about five days a week this amount of food, and it goes every day through. We supply to restaurants. We supply to caterers. We supply to our volunteers. This is about the... The, the, how do you call it, the ubiquitousness of what nature supplies if you work with nature. Then there is, of course, a certain sense of urgency. What I observe as an ecologist is that climate crisis is turned into a business model to grow on with nuclear energy, with solar panels, to grow on with windmills. But the climate crisis is an ecological problem, one of the 30 ecological problems where nature indicates that it's crumbling down under the weight of what mankind takes out and puts back in there. So what we're looking for in this presentation and in what we do is an, an, an ecological solution for an ecological problem. And we, that means it only doesn't work if we do that in the Netherlands or in Ireland. It needs to be European-wide, worldwide. So we were looking not only vegetable gardens, flower matters, we look for an ecological approach that is capable to turn depression, fatalism, and negativism and technological solutions into positive energy of people that get out of their lazy chairs and do something about it. So we we designed a method. We, we already were, were managing neglected forests because forests in our technical, technical world are seen as a cost factor and not as a benefit. And that has two effects. Either you cut and slash every five years everything down so the trees die, or you don't do anything about it, and then you have 200 saplings per square meter. So we designed an artisanal way to upgrade forests and to preserve biodiversity, to improve the cultural historical value, and that has an added value of the fact that we get billions of trees available that we can hand out for free, because the trees are for free, the people we use supply their, their labor for free. So as a statement in a society where everything goes for money, we donate trees for free. And the idea is very simple. There's 200 gigabytes of carbon dioxide too much. One kilogram of wood uh, fixes two kilograms of carbon dioxide if you do your basic chemistry knowledge. So we need to get 100 million square kilometers of new forest to pull the carbon dioxide out of the air. And then that gives us 50 years of extra time when the mines are ready for change to get ready. Here you see an example of the tree planner, which is a tool designed by Urgenda. The red buttons are the areas in Holland where we harvest areas. So those are landowners, that land is their area where we pick up the trees. The green dots are the places where people plant trees, and there are thousands of locations already, and the blue, the blue points are the ones, the volunteers that help us. And what we do, we do nature marketing. That means we say, anybody that wants to have an area remanaged, come to us. Everybody that is worried about climate, help us, and anybody that wants to have trees, come and get them, and there is no limit to what you can do. If you want a million trees, we'd love it to give it to you, but the only thing we will ask is say, please help us getting the people that can get a million trees out of nature. So that, that, is, that has generated an enormous amount of positive energy. And what we notice is that governments and lots of people like what we do, and they see that with bureaucracy and problems and difficult and budgets and et cetera, they are, 
putting society to a, a stop and they see the energy that comes from us. So at this moment, we have nine of the 12 provinces in Holland sponsoring us to donate trees for free in their region. So this is the main way of getting budget as well. Now, more green, um, meer groen has a double meaning. We love to work with statements that you never forget. And the basic principle is that we work according to a one plus one is 10 model. Because we live in a society where everything is detailed, everything is made small, everything is made difficult, and everything is made into money. When you work with us, you do 10 things at the same time. And the five of those are in our acronym. The M stands for maatschappelijk, which is social. You do social work, you do ecological work, we do a cheaper, which is an economical job. It is very educational how to get how to use tools and how to look at nature. And we don't own we're not those weirdos that are hugging trees. We also do it for mankind and not only for animals. So then you have five. But the, the other five are that everything we do should be fun for you, fun for us, fun for society, it should be fun for nature, and it should be fun for hundred thousand years and not 10, and then screaming about the fact that it won't start. So that's our one plus one is 10 model. It, it says we do, we solve three problems, but let's skip this one, we do at least 10 things. We, we pull up carbon dioxide out of the air, we, we improve recreational, we, oh yeah, one of the main things is we supply billions of trees for free, while nursery, everybody wants to plant trees, but there's just not enough trees available. What the, the main example is Mr. Timmermans from the EU, wants to plant 3 billion trees. The first thing he does is sending out the contract, making a budget, but then the tree, the nursery say, okay, we're not gonna plant 3 million trees un until we know that we have it. And by the time the contractual thing is done, uh, five years or 10 years, that's fine. So this is our way we work chance driven. Then there's lots of questions about where we are. Now, basically any forest, any garden, any urban green, everywhere where you start looking ecological, you can find it. You see this lady sitting in a marshy area and around her you have 10 or 20 seedlings and saplings that are just ready to be picked out. But we, we just we were in a forest this morning with eight people. We picked out 265 saplings and shoots from at least 12 species. So the, the, the call that I would like to make is please, start looking ecological because you find trees and saplings in abundance everywhere. In Holland, we, we are a very forest poor area. I think we have only 6% forest, which is about, no, 11% forest, which is about 500,000 hectares. If you have one seedling or sapling per square meter, you can pick up 5 billion trees every year. Uh, then there's always, people always start questions about problems. So that you talk about indigenous species, you talk about problem plants. What we do, we the first thing we do is ecological management of neglected forests. So you have brambles. As a service to the landowner that wants to get rid of brambles, we take the brambles out and we get the cherry trees and the walnuts and the hazelnuts and the, the hawthorns in return. Everything that we harvest, we're not doting. In Holland, there is a, a big split between indigenous trees an exotic tree, in the countryside, you can only plant indigenous trees, but in the city, government has already given up for long because 100% of the Dutch people are buying exotic trees from, from garden centers. So we are very careful in planting trees in the, in the right position where they are, and you get that size, how big they become, and in which type of soil they do. So we harvest and collect everything, but not everything is planted. This is an example of how I go around uh, eight days a week. This is my trailer. So we did a, a one day work with 20 people in an estate in Holland in the dune, and we picked up about 5,000 saplings in, in, in one day. So this is how we bring the trees together. Oh, this one goes on, oh yeah. Then nobody knows the species, we, we only harvest trees in winter when they are at rest because we harvest them with bare roots. So if you do that in summer and the leaves are on, they will be dead within uh, three hours in the sun. Um, so we do, we do our work between half November and half March. 
And all the species that we collect are bundled in groups of 10 or 20 or 40, and they are labeled to what species they are. And this is how management and logistics, but also the handing out is very much facilitated. If we don't bundle them, if we don't bundle them outside, we do that in our tree hut. There's never a one-to-one -one match to the trees that we harvest in a certain location and what we hand out. So we have the concept of that all the, of most of the plants that harvest the trees are brought together in a tree hut. We have about 120 tree huts and there can be anything from a sandy soil uh, uh, and, and a vegetable garden. And we bring them there and we sort them there and then they are planted in our compost soils of our vegetable garden. And from there, they are redistribu redistributed. And we have two groups of distribution. We, we work from half November to half March with the professionals and the semi-professionals, like councils, estate owners, and farmers. They take 500 trees, 1,000 trees, 10,000 trees, 100,000 trees, whatever, and they plant themselves. But then you have the urban people. They want to know, can I plant a beach on my balcony? How often do I have to prune it? Do I give it pocon or manure? But so we keep a nice set of plants. Last week was that week. So in the week of 15 to 21 March, we make three handout days for free. And it's lovely to put the, we had headlines in all the local and national newspapers. And then you get things like this. This is a handout day where about 800 cars are waiting in line to get three trees. Some of them drive 50 kilometers for a single tree. Well, they can get it for five euro in a tree. But the fact that you get trees out for free is a major marketing argument. We, we, we learned, by the way, also, so we have now learned that you shouldn't get 1,800 people at the first moment to grab your tree. So we let people register, and we also have their email addresses, and we allow 50 people per half hour to come and collect. So then the traffic jams are not uh, five kilometers long, but they're only one kilometer long. And it's lots of fun to challenge it and to get people going. Okay, uh, about one third of our uh, trees go to farmers in Holland, and there's a major development in agroforestry, mainly in food. Last year, we had 600 people that buy half an hectare or an acre land or three hectares, and they starting to build their own food forest. We had 600 people that wanted to start food forest and they buy fruit trees, but they get all the other trees from us around it. And a third goes to urban places. What we also do is a lot of people are always concerned about guarantees and they're worried and they want securities and they have this distrust. We, we don't want to radiate this trust. We don't make a contract. We don't demand anything. What we want to generate is positive energy and momentum. We know that not 100% of the trees will survive, but we rather have 80, let's say 150,000 trees survive from 180,000 and then get next year, we go to 1.8 million. So that's the, that's the momentum that we are in. This is something which is quite a valid slide for Ireland and England as well. We are loving the countryside here, but you see here a slide where how Holland looked in 1911 with lots of tree hedges and little forest patches. And this is what uh, agricultural development has done in the year 2000. So we work a lot with farmers that see that this is a no-go area for the future for biodiversity. And we're trying to reestablish a part of restoring the hedgerows again. And a hedgerow is, I think, not considered forest in Ireland, but forest itself is not even as valuable as hedgerows because it's the transition between open land and forest that, that has the highest biodiversity. So I hope you won't get as bare as Holland and that we can start from the point where you are now on and that we can even build and restore more tree hedges. In Holland, we started in 2020, we got it running and it runs by itself. We started in January to, to go to Germany and in the first action we did, we had already a 400,000 tree uh, activity and that is taking so much attention at this moment. I think we'll have 500 or 1,000 German projects running in November. But we are very eco-greedy and we want, to, we want to get to the European level. We want the EU 
to see the value of what, what grassroots work is doing and what ecology is doing. So the more uh, European countries we can get together and where we get the energy from, the easier it becomes to get, to get into the EU program and the EU program will get us worldwide. So Grant and me are this week in the three weeks of Ireland on an exploratory tour to make contact and we love to be here in the eco restoration camp. We love to be, uh, we were in England, we're still going to Northern Ireland and to Scotland. What we want to do is to share our experience, to get contact and to build out a program for the next half year until next season that we make a kickstart in November in a few pilot projects to get some funding, to get the tree planner organized and uh, and work together. I think it helps you if you get Dutch support and it helps us if we get Irish, English and Scottish support. And like that, we build more, let's say social, uh, commercial and political support to, to, to roll on. We were in England first, uh, the start became uh, Sunday morning, and at Sunday morning, seven o'clock, we had our first meeting in an agroforestry department next to where our boat landed, David Wolf. He's going to be one of our other projects in England where we can harvest trees at this place and where we can hand out trees to the region as well. And then we went to Corby and to Cambridge, and uh, we made contact with the National Heritage Fund, with the National Trust Fund. England is, is very strong in loving nature. So we hope to make a, a second and a third pilot project there as well. And then we uh, moved over to Ireland where we reached, I think, Tuesday morning. And we got in touch with uh, Orla from Easy Treasy. We got in touch with Single Council. Um, we got into the most beautiful estate that I've ever seen. We walked around and you see one picture there at the bottom right. An estate with trees of 950 years old, seven, eight meters across. I, I don't like nobility always, but the fact that they keep uh, some parts of our country beautiful so that forests can develop for a thousand years is worthwhile. So we're going to do another pilot project there. We can both harvest and plant there. And this is a call. Oh, and the other slide, which I, I like to we we went through a lot of English highways and we saw that hundreds of thousands of trees were planted there in the government way. And you that's the, the, the top right picture. You see all the hair uh how do you call it uh, tubes that were supposed to protect the plants. The way the government works is that you go everything goes in paperwork in contracts and responsibility. And what, what they do is they look about budget, they look about uh, security, they look about insurance, but there's no ownership. And the result is that I think that only 5% of the 1 million, 10 million trees that were planted on the highways, they have actually survived because there's no ownership. The difference between what we do is that we work with people that take ownership of working and that we, we don't go on holiday if it's three weeks at 25 degrees. We just water our plants. And this is what's lacking in government and commercial organizations. Once the, the companies that planted the trees have got their money, they just dump it. And this is the big difference between grassroots and top-down work. Yeah. What I like to get to is in a discussion, let's say, who gets triggered like, because of this? Because the amount of kickstart that we do depends on how many people step in. Yeah, we want to work with you from April to September to see which areas can we harvest. How can we get volunteers? Uh, how do we organize it that people order trees? How do we get budget to, to transplant the, the Dutch version of the tree planner to an Irish and English and a Scottish one? And, and then, Depending on how many people help us, we can do one pilot project in England or we can do 50 pilot projects in England and Ireland and Scotland. So this is what I like to throw in the group. And we'll, we would love to come back uh, once, the beginning or halfway November to do a, a real hands-on training course. But then we have to find a way that 
that you go on your own and that we expand the project and we expand the experience. So this, this is my request. This is the context where we work in and it depends on how we find each other and how we do the job between now and September, how big of a kickstart is going to be. Thank you for your attention. Go to yeah, Elvis. Very well said, Frank. Thank you so much for what you're doing and congratulations. Everyone should listen to Frank. Good afternoon. <laughs> and thank you to the camps movement, which is bringing it possible, making it possible for Frank to spread this group. If we have, oh yes, oh yes. If you make it interesting, we come. I'm only interested in getting momentum going, and uh, the more momentum that. And I, I love France. I see there's a lot of uh, initiatives going on. I, I was also in the three billion free pledge of the Uni of the European Union, and I saw that a lot of activities going on in France. But there's a kind of an, a cultural uh, separation between Holland and France. I love to get over that. Yes, please, please do invite us and uh, we'll get things going. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, Mike, uh, I, I can't read it that fast. Mark Shipley, we're going to see you on Tuesday. Yeah, Mark Shipley. Yeah, Operator Roller, I'm looking forward to hosting you on Tuesday. Are we going to meet with you? Yeah. Okay, yes, you're coming to meet me on Tuesday, yeah, and we're having lunch with um, Forestry Commission and Northeast Community Forest, so I've tried to get some quite well-connected people, but my question at this stage is around funding, because obviously everything's done for free, we love to do stuff for free with people, but everything still costs money. Are you looking that there's going to be a united funding, or are you looking that local partners like ourselves will have to raise the money? Basically, we, with our work free, we make a statement like this to the society where everything is revolving around money. We want to show that nature provides billions of trees for free. People that are concerned about climate supply their workload for free. And that's why we make a statement. And that's our marketing approach. But as I said, governments start to realize that the 10 billion pages or 10 million pages of rules are not uniting society, it's driving society apart. So via a back door, we get backing of, of, uh, of municipalities, councils, provinces, and even ministries that see that this is generating so much positive energy and social cohesion that they do the funding. But we need to get in touch with the guys that see see the total pictures and that will come. And so we, we partly need to rely on you in making the links of people that want to support this. You know, last, last Saturday, no, I, I don't, I, I won't say, we, we get some donations from people that are happy to get 500 trees, but it's not supporting the, the organization. It, it, it needs, it needs a, a meeting with people that say, this is so valuable, we want to do it and we want to support it and we put our network in. So if you could help us there, please do. Yeah, Mark and Scott, sorry. One, one of the areas we're doing that, during the Rockingham Forest, uh, forest on, on, tu on Tuesday, uh, uh, sorry, on Mon Monday near Corby, and they're working, there's a big project there with the Heritage Fund, the Forest of Life funding. So there is funding in the UK, and there are private and, and trust funding. So we, 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 we will work with you to get funding as well. So what I think the other side is, because we're so small, but once we get four, five, or six different countries, then all of a sudden you can actually tap into all that funding. So we just got to be creative and look at look at the funding that's available because there is a lot of funding available, but sometimes it doesn't go to small organisations. But one of the projects in Rockingham looks like nine partners. There is big funding. They've got about three hundred thousand pounds to to do that in two years. And some of the deliverables we can help them with their deliverables. So there is funding, and I know I believe in Ireland that some of the, the, the sustainability and councils have got funding for projects. It just we just got to open it and make sure that they find it and, and partner with them. So it's, there are organisations that are working in your area, um, and the other area which is totally undervalued and that is the community, the value of community societal health. 
there's a lot of stuff in there. So we can actually start doing stuff creatively in that. But I think that's the other area that's totally underrepresented. But we just got to find the business models and develop that and get funding for that as well. So we know that 95% people only will move for money, but we count on 5 or 10% of people that see the urgency of the situation and see the value of this approach. And together we should unite those people to get the things going. And an, a, an article in a national newspaper may help. Uh, a, a, a documentary on television may help. Direct contact with people that are sitting on tons of money and don't know how to spend it might help. But that's a matter of, of using the means that we have to get it going. And we may start, we may start small, but the more people we get together and the more budget we get together, the bigger the kickstart can be. One last question from Dermot, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Dermot, can you hear? You, you, can you... Uh, yes, uh, first of all, Frank, congratulations on such a, I'd say, such a positive and energetic presentation. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet your team yesterday in uh, in Shankill in Dublin, and we mm -hmm. saw what you were doing. And I, I think it's, you. Uh, I would just like to say you'll have the full support of my organization, Crown Trees for Ireland. We, we are delighted to have, to support this initiative. Um, I have a question about bureaucracy. Um, in the Netherlands, do you have any problems with plant passports or phytosanitary certificates when you are moving plants around the country? I know in the EU there is a lot of regulation about the movement of plants and plant products from different parts of um, the country, and also having certificates, provenance certificates, to show the origin of the trees and the species and that they're disease and plant-free. So I just wonder, have you encountered any problems in the Netherlands with I, official... I, I with very clear about that. Never, ever. Good, good. No. I, I hope that's the way it continues. <laughs> but uh, we, I know we, a lot of plants require plant we, passports. We love, to, we love to leave the problems with the government. We do the fun part and we Good. just do it. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. And I hope that that, that, that continues. <laughs> John, go ahead and hit John. That John Liu has it. Excuse me. Um, so what uh, I think in the discussions that I've been having in the um, advisory council, the uh, advisory board of the UN decade, I think we could do a collective John, we're losing you. John, do you want to turn your video off, please? Camps and more. So I think we could to the UN decade both the concept of the ecosystem restoration camps and more green and see whether they would like to incorporate that. We're loading you again. Yeah. We go to Yeah, it doesn't work, John. Sorry. Can you send it by mail or app? In the chat. Or in the chat, yeah. John, can you in the chat, please? Then we try Orla. Can you put your question in an app in the in the chat? I frankly, I just wanted to say thank you for all uh you all the help this week and the the elegant simplicity of your approach, avoiding all plant passports, because if you're chopping a bit of alder or willow and putting it then in another part of the same field, it's not a problem. require, of course, Frank to... Um, yeah, doc, doc, or not. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Why again, Orla? Sorry, Orla. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so uh, it's a big hit anyway. We are out again this morning with even more schools, Franca, and it's going down a treat. We'd love to have you back in November uh, to uh, boil it down even further, make a few perhaps one minute films on planting your elder wand 
planting your uh, your whomping willow and your euonymus spindle and I think the children will take to it greatly. So Might thank you for your contribution. We were, um, I was videoing today when we were working. So we might have a few offerings on Shield Decree's YouTube page in the next coming weeks. We might be able to share Fantastic. with you. Fantastic. comes out in the yeah. when I review Well the done, and thank you for this great uh, conference. Bye. It's just, just my pleasure. But I, I now notice, thinking about it, uh, I haven't mentioned one important thing. Most people are geared towards tree planting, and our approach is extremely complementary. So we don't... We don't compete with anybody that wants to plant trees. We just, in addition to the trees you can get from nurseries and from commercial companies, we supply an abundance of extra trees. Okay. 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 I think you have to slow. Yeah, there's one more question. If you want to go ahead there, thank you, Lee. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. I really enjoyed it. It was so inspiring. Um, I'm actually... The ambassador for Nature Positive Universities, which is a project uh, co-led by Oxford University um, and UNEP. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you um, for your talk and um, for introducing your project. And um, I also helped um, Orla with um, organizing the TEDx Crunch East Ireland Conference um, back in 2021. Um, it was fabulous. And um, yeah, I just wanted to ask you a question. So um, can university campuses um, get involved in your project? And if yes, how? Yes, I would love, I love that. I have, I, I want, of course, a million things. But one of the things that rules our world is that things should be on paper. And I'm looking already for 20 years for a few PhD students that completely analyze how society is running and how we're running and to compare that. And I'd like to get it into major conferences, how, how we destroy the future of our society and how we can get out of it socially and ecologically. So if you could get me a professor that sees the value of this and wants to completely independently uh, take all the little bits out and document it in a scientific way so that people can see and believe and read what we do and see the value of it. Yes, please. Yeah, um, I will forward um, your contacts uh, to the program coordinator for Nature Positive Universities. And um, because she's uh, also staff at Oxford, um, I'm sure she knows a lot of professors from either the biology department or like other departments um, who may be interested in your project, definitely. Um, thanks for telling me about it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I was supposed to um, actually meet you in Cambridge, but um, because of an event, I'm actually in Hungary. So um, sorry about that. Uh, um, but I'm sure that we'll be able to meet at some point. Okay, stay in touch. And if you find someone, we're available at the spot and at the moment. Yeah? Sure. Uh, uh, so from John, to you, I think we should collaborate to share the concept of Miragro in collaboration with ecosystem restoration communities and use UN Deckard of ecosystem restoration to use the Miragro and methodology collaboration with various camps and communities around the world. This could allow the fundraising responsibility to go toward the UN with the actions led by the people. Yes. Yeah, 100%, John. Yeah, couldn't have said, couldn't have said it better myself, but we, we yeah, the guys are inspiring, and it's happy to, we're happy to work with them, and well, I know the people have, they have worked with them as well. We're, we're going to have some lunch and have some, <laughs> have some meetings. We're going to get it going. We we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thanks very much for your uh, questions, everyone. And then um, look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you. Very worthwhile. Thanks very much for hosting it all there in Shield Shakri. It's not possible. It's not going to lead you. That's five, another five miles. 45 miles. Thank you. And more green sun, more trees, more green.
over the last three days. So over the last three days here in New York, there's been a very so uh, listen, I'm really worried that I'm going to be knocked off. So I just want to say a, a couple of words. Okay. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I'm really sorry that uh, the timing is not perfect because I'm driving to Massachusetts. But um, I noticed in all the meetings that I've been in over the last few months, weeks and months, including this one in New York, that there is a growing awareness of the need for funding for the uh, restoration efforts. And what I've been working on is trying to connect the people who are doing the work together with the funders, because the funders have quite a lot of money, but they don't know exactly what to do. And, and if they don't support those who are already doing the work, then they, they have a long runway before they can have any results. And what Frank is doing, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. And I, I know that actually you, you guys have been, have been harvesting some trees using his method, which I think is great. And it's, it's really very, very useful to be able to take the naturally um, propagated trees rather than imagine that we know better than nature how to how to propagate trees. So his method is really, really, really wonderful. And I, I hope that uh, it will go well. I expect you to have a good time. And if there's anything that I can do, I'm going to try to stay on. And uh, if I can be of any assistance, if you need, have any questions or anything that I can do for you, I'd be happy to do it. I also have, um, I also have um, a lot of materials that I can make available to you. So thanks again for having me and good luck with your meeting. And I'm gonna stay on as long as it lasts. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. So we're we're on this point. You know, you hear us, and they can see the latest. You hear us, or this is one of the six. You can see it, and then it just comes up, and you can hear us. Six, can you hear us? We can hear us. Darren can't hear us. Okay. So just a little. Not not that sound is a little bad. Very poor quality. I'd say move closer to the speaker. Yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, it's better. <laughs> Much better. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the problem. It's the, are we on the, is this the problem? Is this the, is this the problem? Move the book. 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 Move the can you still hear me as well as you could a minute ago? I can't see anybody now. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes, we it's, can hear you. It's doable. Not good enough, though, is it? Do you want to start your presentation? Frank? I can do it. Am I first? Yeah, we can do it. Okay. Can we have to put the presentation up? Yeah. Okay. Is the president start? <laughs> I can start. How is that? No, that's this my is your presentation, not mine. 
Break the other one. It's in a different browser. Share screen at the bottom. Right Everybody else, sound off, please. I don't do that, but. Well, I'm to help. Oh, my head then. Yeah, I need to share screen. You may choose my point. New share? Is it? Is it like a new share? Is it work? Yeah. There's new share. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it comes. No, but that's that's your one again. We're looking for the other one. Um, not on. Sorry, we just be a little bit patient. Can you do your? I can do my part. Yeah, but you can do it. 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 Yeah, but